Now, before I go any further, let me state this to all of you. This is just kind of all speculation. This is really all... Nothing's been officially confirmed. Nothing's been said. Um, nothing's been officially like, hey, this is actually happening. And really, this was kind of sparked from just an idea, you know, just from looking at a hearsay, um, uh, kind of one of those hearsay sites like here, like we got this covered. Fun fact, don't believe anything from we got this covered because they do, to they totally do not have this covered. <laughs> but the idea was sparking enough, and this has been um, something that's been like a lot on a lot of people's minds for the MCU moving forward. As we head into Phase 4, there's uh, there's still a lot of stuff for Phase 5 that is coming out at some point or another. Now, the big thing with... Um, one of the big things for Phase 5 is clearly going to be the next Black Panther movie. Now, the other... Uh, so that's the big thing right there, but there's also something else. There's been a lot of talk of a possible character showing up and making his MCU debut, but not as a hero. No, nope, I'm talking about Namor and his role as a villain. That's been the biggest hearsay for the longest time that um, the villain for Black Panther 2 is going to be Namor. Now, again, keep in mind that um, Namor hasn't been confirmed. This video is just more like, eh, when, uh, what's it going to be like if Namor... Let's, this is all the hypothetical, what if Namor is the villain for Black Panther 2? That's all this is. So, I think this, if Namor was to ever show up in the MCU, which I'm pretty sure at some point he, Namor is going to make his appearance in the MCU, I think one of the major things for this for that movie is that, I mean, excuse me, for his MCU debut is that he needs to be different from Aquaman. Yes, I am aware that Namor came first before Aquaman. Yeah, a lot of people forget that. Hell, even I forgot that at one point. But Namor came out before Aquaman, and, but however, Aquaman's movie came out before Namor ever made his official debut in the MCU. I mean, you know, underwater earthquake withstanding in, in Endgame, which we still don't know if that was totally him. It was probably him. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, what's going to differentiate Namor from Aquaman now? Well, the best way to do it is a villain. And I know what you're thinking. Really, making him a villain is the smart idea? It is. Because Namor is a really complex character. That's what makes Namor such a fun character to play with in the in the Marvel Universe, is that he can teeter between hero and villain at the drop of a hat. And we discovered that reason why that is in Chip Zdarsky's latest Invaders run. Um, he's, you know, it's confirmed that, yeah, he's suffering from PTSD, and Xavier at one point screwed with his head. So maybe if you do the whole PTSD thing, um, from his time in the war, as well as having him, um, having him, su you know, suffer some stuff from maybe some mental, uh, something, someone blocked it, maybe that'd be a cool way to mention the X-Men, because he is also a mutant. Uh, not the first mutant, because, yeah, that title goes to Apocalypse, um, but yeah. So, so why is it that people want Namor to be Black Panther's villain? Why do a lot of people want Namor to be, you know, the next villain for Black Panther? In a weird way, it makes a lot of sense. Namor and, and T'Challa are both kings, both the king of Wakanda and the king of Atlantis. They've also been very political rivals in the past. Namor, remember in AVX, he kind of... Uh, drowned Wakanda. <laughs> he kind of uh, sent a tidal wave to destroy Wakanda. Um, so that was the big, you know, that was kind of a driving force between them, and they've always been, like, antagonistic towards one another, because um, Namor teeters on the brink of madness, even, but he is still a good king. A harsh king, but a fair king nonetheless. And then you have T'Challa, who is kind and, you know, a benevolent king. Um... So that would be very that would be a nice little duality to really play with is that you know Namor's kind of firm you know he's still a good king considered by his peers but really he's you know he's a, has a more tighter grip on on the Atlanteans whereas um, you know T'Challa is really starting to branch out further with Wakanda he's starting to really uh, branch out further with that empire you know with that world uh, I mean excuse me the world around him. So that's a major thing you have to look at in here. 
Um, the other major, the other point you have to look at is that Namor is. It would be interesting to see them fight because T'Challa, while he is powerful and he does have a lot of tech that he can use, Namor vastly outclasses him in terms of uh, terms of strength. And when he gets in the water, dude, not even the Hulk can uh, really it, oh, like. Even the Hulk and Thor have trouble when they're in the water because um, Namor's power level, his strength level, comes from you know his distance away from the water. If he's in the water, good luck trying to fight him. If he, you know, if he's out of water, he's still powerful. But the longer you keep him out of water, the weaker he becomes. So that would be really uh, that would be really cool. Is if T'Challa first fights Namor and he's freshly out of the water, tries to go to punch him, it'd be like punching, you know. Just solid titan. It'd be like the equivalent of, of punching uh, solid brick. So that's the um, that's a you know a major thing you have to look at in this is that it would be a better version of Batman v Superman and makes more sense for these two characters to fight even though they've been considered heroes. It makes more sense because Namor has never really been on. He's only really these days he's only cared about one thing, Atlantis. And if you're not Atlantean. Uh, he don't give a fuck about you, I'm sorry to say. So that would be a cool uh, cool thing to play with in terms of power level. It would also be neat, interesting, is like, um, maybe if Namor was the villain of, uh, Black, you know, of Black Panther 2, it would be cool if he did send that tidal wave, just destroy Wakanda, when they're so close to, you know, showing the rest of the world all of this gore, of this beautiful tech uh, that Wakanda has at their disposal, and just share it with the world, in comes Namor with a tsunami, and just boom. But the, here's the other thing. Why... Do Namor and and T'Challa go to war? Why do Wakanda and Atlantis, and Atlantis go to war? That's you know the question you really have to ask yourself. There has to be a reason why Namor is singling out um, T'Challa. Now you could have another villain in here, kind of like perpetuating the war. You could have like um, Moses Magnum, who is a Black Panther villain, and also an arms dealer. You could have it that. He's perpetuating the war between Wakanda and Atlantis to get his hands on both Wakandan and Atlantean weapons. And you can also have someone like um, like King Shark or Atuma or uh, or uh, Kang. Excuse me, uh, Kr uh, yeah, Krang, uh, who is another um, yeah, Krang. Not j not the alien brain. I'm talking about the Adl the C the D list Atlantean villain, uh, Namor villain. Or, or, you know, someone of that degree is helping Moses Magnum uh, kind of perpetuate this war so he can get... And now that, you know, uh, Moses Magnum makes a lot of sense to be that kind of uh, villain, you know, that another arms dealer. And you may be thinking, really, another arms dealer villain? Yeah, because Claw's dead. Claw is gone, so the... Oh, you know, and he was the um, top seller for all these weapons. So now it's free game with Claw gone. You can have Magnum show up and just you know, take over the business, take over everything Claw had, and, you know, really del you know, really dig into um, the vibranium part of, you know, the vibranium weapons, as well as, you know, being open to having, hey, now I can sell Atlantean weapons. So, and that would kind of, and he would be, like, perpetuating the war between them, because war makes money, you know, war means money. Anyway. So, there you go, guys. Um... Like I said, this is all kind of really speculation and hearsay. Um, it would it be cool to have Namor as the you know start out as a villain in the MCU? Yeah, I mean it, it's really a lo it really makes sense as a logical choice. So it would be you know I think it makes sense, but you really have to show why Namor is uh, targeting Wakanda first and foremost. And uh, you know because obviously I don't think Wakanda would purposely go to war with Atlantis. Cause I don't even think they know they're there. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows you're there. And also, yeah, maybe M Namor is um, a little already on edge with the surface world because of, uh, I don't know, the uh, uh, the blip or the snap or whatever you want to call it. You could have it like, yeah, some shit happened for five years, my people, like half my people were gone, and then they suddenly reappeared, and you people have learned nothing in the five years, and are now, like, the world's getting worse, my oceans are getting worse, so, uh, you know, I'm coming up there. <laughs> so, yeah. So that could, you know, that could be another way to look at it. But you guys tell us here at Comic Universe, uh, what do you guys think of the idea of Namor being the villain? Now again, 
have to stress that, that nothing's been confirmed. This is more like a fun little topic video for you guys. A fun little, um, just a fun little idea here and there. So you guys tell us here at Comic Universe, uh, what do you guys think of Namor, if Namor was the villain for Black Panther 2? And if you don't want him, who would you pick as the Black Panther 2's villain? Just comment below, let us know, and if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this video and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.